Addison Lee is proud to sponsor the Ancient World in London series. The courses of true love never did run smooth. February, Valentine's Day has just been, didn't get any cards, but has it always been a month for love or on love? Oh yeah, it kind of has for thousands of years actually. I went online, I found out there's two Greco-Roman festivals in February. There's Lupercalia, celebrated from the 13th to the 15th, and that's a festival of fertility. And Gamelian, which is the month of February, and that celebrated the marriage of Zeus and Hera. Nice, let's find out some more. We went to the Petri Museum to meet up with Debbie Charles. Romance is an alien concept to the ancient world, um, particularly the Romans. It was very different the relations between the genders, between the sexes, and how you um, had love affairs and how it depended upon your position in society. If you were a Roman man, then you could afford to have love affairs and write love poetry. For a Roman woman, for example, it would be very different. It'd be different again if you're a slave woman. I'm quite glad that I live today and not in the Roman period as I probably would have been married off at the age of 14 um, to a much older man. The well, romantic hotspot for couples is Bath Spa, so we sent Natalie down there to see what dirt she could do. Finally here in Bath, we are now going to meet with Stephen Clues, who is the manager here. And so I'm eager to meet him and just learn more about this amazing place. What would a typical day at the baths be like? Well, all sorts of people would come to the baths. Uh, they were not socially exclusive institutions. When they got here they would have uh, gone through a fairly straightforward bathing process, uh, go to changing rooms, then uh, uh, strip off probably from uh, perhaps some bathing tunics uh, or they might go naked, it just depends. Then they would uh, probably go through a series of heated rooms and getting progressively warmer uh, towards the hottest room. Then finish the whole process off with a plunge. In this bathhouse uh, we have the very large swimming bath here, the great bath but there are smaller warm baths as well. I heard that um, some people compare baths like the equivalent of brothels. I think it may be true for some baths, although they wouldn't have been entirely brothels. Um, there's uh, a bath in Rome that uh, has erotic wall paintings, and uh, so it's assumed that uh, the activities there were um, morally questionable. Um, but uh, I think this bathhouse probably wouldn't have been like that. Its, it's whole setup was rather different. It's uh, rather large, rather grand, probably under the control of priests, and indeed it uh, has separate facilities at uh, either end of the Great Bar. If you're laying on the same facilities in two separate places, it, uh, it's probably got something to do with uh, gender separation. Well, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to come and chat with me. Water, there really wouldn't be a city because when the Romans first arrived in, in this part of the world um, there was no reason for them to settle here apart from the fact that there was hot water coming out of the ground so they could build their baths and the fact that there was hot water here made it a place for other people to then come and visit yeah. so they had tourists effectively and once the Romans withdrew from Britain the city carried on thriving as a small market town but with hot water. How does this pool now, this bath now, differ to how it would have been 2,000 years ago? Well, 2,000 years ago there would have been a Roman well here. They think they would have drawn water for ceremonial purposes. And then it wasn't until about the Middle Ages where we know that there was another pool here which they obviously built on top of the Roman well where people would come and bathe. And then in the 1990s when the City won Millennium Commission money to build a new spa. 
they also won money to carry out conservation on the old spa buildings in Bath. And this was one of the buildings which was then conserved. And at that time, they then put in this pool, which we can see today, which is a modern pool, but it's dropped inside the original Georgian pool. Well, that was Charlotte, everybody. She was so nice and just so informative. I really feel like I've learned a lot from my day. And she's also been giving us the opportunity to now go and have a dip in the baths ourselves. Uh, unfortunately, it is public bathing, but it's not public viewing, so bye. So there's our ancient lesson in love. Every week we're going to feature a, a special artifact of the week. Uh, this week is the Warren Cup. Enjoy it. An older man and a rusty is courting a younger man. Um, and it was about causing him with gifts and they would perhaps have sex together or he would become his boyfriend. But it was a fixed period of time that you would be that younger man. I think the reason it's alien to us today is actually because our idea of when people should have sex has changed. In the last 10, 20 years, we, did, we find the idea of sex between men less weird, but we find the idea of such older men and younger men more problematic. So join us on our next adventure, we'll be taking Nicole on a guided tour around Rome and London. So it's got enough history for you.